One of the things a lot of people struggle with and even fear in relationships is this idea of, of them losing themselves. I've talked with countless people who have said something like this, you know, in that last relationship or in, in my last marriage, I really felt like I lost myself. I gave up everything that was me on behalf of the other person. Then you got other people who swing the other way and they think any level of sacrifice, any level of self-denial means that they'll get taken advantage of and for sure lose themselves. And then on top of that, you throw in the fact that we live in a society right now that's all about self-love, whatever that means. And so it seems like this idea of self-love and self-denial are battling with each other and can't coexist in a relationship. So in this video, I wanna talk about why sacrifice is so important to a relationship and what healthy self-denial actually looks like in a relationship. That's today on Relation Shots. Welcome to Relation Shots. My name is Eric Wooten. If this is your first time hanging out with us, welcome to the place to get practical relationship advice that actually works in your relationship. If you've not already done so, go ahead and click the subscribe button and the bell notifications so you don't miss upcoming videos. If you want a free guide to intimacy, you'll see the link in the description area below. If you need a place to grow your relationship, check out all the resources below. We've got classes, we've got our membership, uh, we have retreats, we've got all kinds of tools for you to grow your relationship. We'd love to help you in that. So check out the links in the description area below. Let's talk about self-denial. It seems like self-denial and self-love are in this epic cultural battle for the soul of the individual where people are like, I don't know about self-denial because if I deny myself, then maybe I'll be taken, care, taken advantage of. They switch to the other side and they're like, it's all about self-love and protecting yourself and then they end up with no relationship. So the question is, can self-denial and self-love coexist? What's the middle ground? I absolutely believe self-denial and self-love not only can coexist, but self-love is necessary for healthy self-denial to exist in a relationship. So those of you that may be a little concerned about eh, when is too much of self-denying myself in a relationship and being taken advantage of, or maybe you've been in a relationship like that where it was lopsided and you're like, yeah, I don't know what that looks like. Let's start with the concept of self-love and then I'm gonna move into five areas that I think represent healthy self-denial in a relationship. Self-love, listen, here's the reality. We do need some level of self-love in us before we can have self-denial in a relationship. See, relationships can get lopsided. Absolutely, the power dynamic can be off and we can find ourselves at times where somebody is giving way more than they're receiving and normally that relationship isn't gonna last very long unless the person just loves not ever getting the things that they need and desire in a relationship. More commonly, what is happening in a relationship when someone gives, quote, too much of themselves, it's because that person is enabling and rescuing the other person rather than actually loving and giving wholeheartedly from a healthy place. See, that person is actually giving too much of themselves because they don't have self-love or the internal structure or boundaries before emptying themselves for another person. You need to be full and healthy before you can empty yourself and self-deny for the relationship, right? So if that's you, you need to get healthy, you need to get filled up, you need some personal growth before you even think about having a relationship with healthy self-denial. But when that exists with two people, then self-denial actually becomes an important aspect of the relationship because self-denial creates the space that couples need for their love to grow, right? If I'm in a good place, the other person's in a good place and we're able to deny ourselves at times on behalf of the other, the relationship and the love will grow. So assuming that people are in a good place, they're filled up because you need to be full before you can empty yourself, they're in a healthy place, let me give you five areas or, or five things that you should consider when it comes to self-denial in a relationship. These are five things where self-denial is healthy healthy in the relationship. Number one is denying yourself the privilege or opportunity to say whatever you want to say. Yeah, it is healthy at times for you not to just share your feelings and thoughts about everything whenever you feel them and whenever you want to share them, even if it's true. Yes, 
That means we don't always have to say the truth if it's going to be hurtful to the other person. We don't always have to say everything out of mind. I can't stand you. You're bugging me. This is really irritating. You know what? I'm just not feeling you today. We don't have to just say absolutely everything that's on our mind. This also means that we do not have to take the privilege to point out every sing, every little single little thing that the other person does that we can't stand. There's a proverb that actually says this, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offense. Oftentimes denying yourself the privilege of bringing up every little offense in the relationship is actually good for the relationship it's good to overlook an offense every once in a while. I'm not talking about every time and I'm not talking about big egregious they cheat on you and you're like, oh, just overlook that. I'm talking about you could find stuff every single day to get offended about in a relationship with somebody if you really want to. So part of good self-denial in a relationship is denying yourself the ability to say whatever you want. Number two is denying yourself the right to fight for fairness. Now I've done a whole video on fairness and why fairness doesn't work in relationships. So I'm not going to just go on and on about this one. But the reality is when couples are fighting for fairness, they start scorekeeping, they start keeping a ledger, they start focusing on performance in the relationship. And there is nothing that will kill a love relationship like focusing on performance, and scorekeeping. So one of the healthy areas that we deny ourselves in a relationship is demanding that the relationship be fair and instead focusing on what we can give and how we can serve in that relationship. Number three is our dreams and desires. Now pause before you just turn the video off. I'm I'm not saying that you always give up all your dreams and desires because here's what you're saying. Well, that's exactly how I lost myself in the last relationship. What I'm saying is that there are times when we may give up a dream or a desire for a period of time or for a season on behalf of the relationship. For instance, uh, you may give up a hobby for a season because it is keeping you away from your family or your spouse. There was a season when we had three little girls that I did not golf a whole lot because a round of golf takes up six hours on a Saturday. So I gave some of that up for a time because I wanted to prioritize the family. Maybe it's a, you give up a side business for a season or spending lots of time with friends for a season to prioritize the family. Maybe you make a financial sacrifice, deny yourself some things monetarily so that your spouse can go back to school. Maybe you take a job in a city that you don't necessarily love because it's the best thing for the family for a season before you move into a different job that you really love. So these things are seasonal sacrifices and hopefully the desire is that both spouses would be wanting to give up things for seasons to see their spouse become all that they want them to be. So the giving up the dreams and desires is not lifelong. I just totally shut that down forever and just forget I ever had that. I'm saying there may be seasons when we deny ourselves some of our dreams or desires on behalf of the relationship instead. And when we do that, that is a healthy thing. Number four is we give up our freedom to disconnect at times. We want to deny ourselves the freedom to say, you know what? I need to disconnect. Listen, we will all be in seasons. Or maybe we're angry, maybe we're frustrated, maybe we need some me time, whatever it might be. We're stressed where we just do not feel like connecting with our spouse. And it is okay to have some me time, but it also is good for the relationship at times because healthy relationships are built on connection and trust. So there may be times when I really want to disconnect because I'm frustrated or stressed out or I just don't feel like dealing with a relationship right now where instead I'll deny myself the freedom to disconnect and I'll engage and connect because the attachment and the relationship is more important than in this moment, me disconnecting to get my own little me time in the moment. And sometimes we value that connection in the relationship. And when we do that and we choose to deny ourselves the freedom to disconnect, it actually builds trust and builds love in the relationship. A fifth area 
that is important to deny ourselves sometime is immediate gratification. Listen, so many times we just want stuff now. So maybe you need to uh, give up some financial stuff that you want now on behalf of saving for later. Maybe you need to delay a decision you want to make until you have time to talk to your spouse about that decision. Uh, maybe you will need to work on emotional and intellectual connection when you just really want sex. Maybe uh, you have to stay at a job two years longer than you really want to stay at because it will set the family up for what you had agreed upon were some values and goals from the family. There will be times in the relationship when for the sake of the relationship and on behalf of the relationship, we will deny immediate gratification and play the longer game in the relationship and that is healthy self-denial at times. So there's five areas or five things uh, that I think are healthy aspects of self-denial in a relationship that will not mean you lose yourself because again, I think self-love and self-denial can go hand in hand in a relationship. When you are filled up personally, when you are in a healthy place personally, when your growth and development as an individual has you in a good place, then self-denial is not something that will get you into a place where you lose yourself and it's an unhealthy aspect of the relationship. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on this little uh, battle between self-denial and self-love. Maybe where, where have you given too much of yourself in a relationship or maybe it was a lack of self-love and being full and healthy as an individual that allowed you to rescue and enable the other person. But I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below on this concept of self-denial and self-love. If we can help you in any area of your relationship, we'd love to do that. Check the links in the description area below. And until next time, I'll see you right back here on Relation Shots.